section 7.7 .7 is exponential growth and decay. And today we're going to learn about exponential growth and a growth factor, um, compound interest, and exponential decay and the decay factor. Okay? And of course, um, an exponential function model can model growth or decay of an individual amount. So, exponential growth can be modeled by the function, oops, by the function y is equal to a times b to the x, where a is greater than 0, b is greater than 1, and b is the growth factor. b is the growth factor. And the growth factor equals 1 plus the percent rate um, plus the percent rate of change expressed as a decimal. Okay? This is what the growth rate is. Alright, so here again the formula, we have y is equal to a times b to the x where the initial amount is your a the B is the growth factor, and exponent, your X, is your independent variable. This is what the graph looks like for a, um, an exponential growth equation or function. Okay? Now, the question down here says, why does an exponent, why does an exponential growth function not exist when b is less than or equal to 1. Yes? <laughs> um, because <laughs> because, um, because it's now decayed because it's less than 1? Because it was less than 1, it would be decay. So it would be subtracting, it would go down, it would be decreasing rather than increasing. All right, so you can use an exponential growth function when an initial amount increases by a fixed percent each time. So it's exponential growth when your initial amount increases. Okay, make sure you write this down. When your initial amount increases. So problem one says modeling exponential growth. Suppose the population of a town was 25,000 people in 2000. If the population grows about 1.5% each year, what will the approximate uh, population be in 2025? So now we need to figure out what our variables are. Okay? We need to define our variables. So remember, x, let's see. X is our time. X is time. That's our, our uh, independent variable. So, since we're going from 2000 to 2025, X is equal to 25 years. Okay? Y is what we're solving for. Y is what we're solving for. What will the approximate population be? Okay, that's our Y. So, um, we are solving for the approximate population in 2025. A, A was our initial, our initial amount, right? So initially, what was the population? 25,000. Very good. So there's our A. And B is our growth factor, right? B is our growth factor. And the way we find our growth factor is, I'm going to put this right here. 
the way we're going to find our growth factor, remember, is 1 minus the percent written as a decimal. So the growth rate, or I'm going to write B instead of, instead of G. So our B is equal to 1 minus the 15% or 1.5%. Oh, that's not good. Written as a decimal. How do I change a percent to a decimal? You move the decimal two places to the left. Very good. So that's going to be 0. Point zero one five. And I apologize, it's supposed to be plus. Right? It's one plus zero point zero five. So that's the growth because it's growth factor, right? Because it's growth, we have to add. So B will be one point zero one five. So now we can substitute all of our variables, all of our values, into our, um, our function, okay? So we have uh, y is equal to a, which is 25,000, times b, which is 1.015, raised, raised to the x, which is 25. So now, all we have to do is simplify. All right, so we've got 1.015 raised to the 25th. So we've got 1.015 raised, here it is, raised to the 25th power so, I'm going to put about 1.45. Is that right clear? All right. So, we've got 25,000 times about 1.45. So, now we multiply uh, 1.45 times 25,000, and that gives us 36,250. 36,250. What's my label? People. People, because it's population, right? And you're done. So all you're doing is you are taking values from your word problem and then substituting in to your um, formula for exponential growth. When a bank pays interest on both principal and the interest an account has already earned, the bank is paying compound interest. Compound interest is another example of exponential growth. The formula for compound interest is this. A equals P times the quantity 1 plus r divided by n, all raised to the power n times t, where a is the balance that you're looking for. p is the principal, or the initial deposit. r is the annual interest rate, and we'll express that as a decimal so we can figure out what our, our growth rate is. The n is the number of times the interest is compounded per year, and T is the time in years. All right, so suppose when your, that when your friend was born, your friend's parents deposited $2,000 in an account paying 4.5% interest compounded monthly. What will the account balance be after 18 years? 